I've been making these cute little burlap pumpkins for my table dressing for Halloween and I'm going to show you how to make them. I've made them out of burlap and I've sewn the stitches on the outside so at least this really uh, kind of rustic organic rough edges and it also means that your sewing doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and they're really simple to make. You could uh, maybe fragrance them with something like um, a spiced apple potpourri or, or a little bit of um, cinnamon in there would smell nice as well. I've just put some toy filling in inside mine. Um, so you're going to need your burlap, you'll need a little bit of green felt to make the leaves and this is how I made them. I'll put my felt to one side for just a second and I need to cut out from my burlap six large leaf shapes. Now I'm not particularly worried about them being symmetrical or even all the same shape. So again just roughly cutting around in an arc and then back down the other side. This is going to be a nice fat pumpkin. So that's the shape that I've got. And then I am going to use one of those as a template and cut out four more shapes. So I've got two layers of burlap that I'm cutting through all at the same time. Really easy to cut, it does fray a lot, but that's the, the nature of the fabric. You could actually make these from felt as well. That would be a nice idea. And maybe use your pinking shears to give them a fancy jagged edge. OK, two more. And then we'll sew them together. I've put a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine and I've shortened it quite a bit so that um, the fabric doesn't actually fray too much. I, I don't mind a little bit of fraying on the edge of the fabric, but I don't want it to come undone. Just pop that to one side and then, whoops, stay there. And then we'll sew these together. So with the right sides facing outwards, if you've got a printed burlap, like I have here, this one actually came from Joanne. Plain burlap would work just as well. Or what would be a nice idea uh, would be maybe to decorate your own. So you could use fabric paints. You know, it's not like these are going to go in the wash. So if you have any alcohol ink pens or paints, then you could paint them orange or you could paint the outlines of pumpkins um, or faces on them as well. Maybe black triangles for eyes and a jagged mouth to make them look a little bit scary. There's one. Open that up and you can see how the shape stops to form already when you stretch that out. So I'm just going to keep sewing all the way around with the wrong sides together. From top to bottom, apart from the last piece, because the last piece you're going to leave a gap just in the top so that you can actually stuff it. So I'm just lining up those edges. So it doesn't have to be particularly perfect um, and in fact if it's not I think it looks even better gives you that rustic kind of look and if you've not sewn with burlap or hessian before it's actually really simple because it's such a, an open weave you'll find it easy to get underneath your sewing machine so you, know, you don't need a, an industrial strength sewing machine to sew through it even though the fabric's quite thick it's basically made up of um, strands of string which are all loosely woven which is why it's so easy to sew through. Two more to go after this one. So it's quite a quick project. Might look quite nice if you have different sizes of them, not just on your dining table as these are going to be, um, but you could even hang them up and maybe have a little bit of um, Halloween bunting in your windows. And because you do have such a, a loose weave of fabric, if you were to pop one of those little tea lights, you know, the battery operated ones, not the ones with the flame, um, inside there, then it's probably light up quite nicely. Almost there. You see I've got quite a lot of layers going over the ends now, but it's still quite easy to sew through. 
so just one more piece in there so it's starting to look a little bit more pumpkin like now but remember with this one I'm going to leave a little bit of an opening just in the top so that I can actually stuff it so this one also all the way around line those edges up again down the side over that thick end piece and then this is the final piece so here I'm going to start about three inches from the top and I'll hand sew that closed after I've stuffed it Make sure I'm only sewing the two pieces together. I'm not sewing the back of my pumpkin together. All the way down to the bottom. There we go. So this is how we're looking. Looks a little bit like a soccer ball, doesn't it? Um, there's my opening. So that's where I'm going to stuff my toy filler. Um, toy filler or the kind of hollow fibre that you find inside uh, old cushion covers will be absolutely fine for this. It doesn't have to be the softest of filling because it's not a toy. So just keep pushing it in there. And I'm not going to overstuff it because I don't want it to be a big round ball. I still want it to be a little bit squashy so it's got more of a, a pumpkin shape than a football shape. And there we go. So a little bit more. Surprising how much it does take. And a bit more. And I think that'll do. It's um, The filling's kind of sticking to the outside, so I might have to go over that with a bit of tape just to remove it later. So I wanted to squash. I want the top to poke in, and I want the base to sit flat. If you put too much stuffing in, it'll kind of rock. It'll look a little bit more like a ball. Um, so I'm just going to sew that opening closed. And because you, you don't really see the stitches because of the loose weave, um, I'm not worried about this being absolutely stitch perfect. So I'm just going to do a, a running stitch across the opening. And then we'll make the stalk. I'll just knot that off in the centre. Whoops, come here. Right, now for the stalk, what I did was to take the edge of my hessian with the selvage and just cut a piece about two inches wide and about, what, six inches long? And roll it up. Like so. And then just put a few stitches along the side there to hold it in place. You could glue that if you wanted to. But while I've got the needle and thread here, may as well may as well stitch it, be quicker. So just lock my stitches off. And just sew over and over. I'm not doing any particular hand stitch. And then before actually trimming the end of my thread, that's going to go into the top of my pumpkin. So again, just sewing over and over the end, not particularly neatly, it really doesn't matter. Okay, but I'm not going to actually knot my thread off just yet because I need to put the leaves on so I'll just take a little bit of felt and I'm going to cut two more of those leaf shapes again they don't have to be perfect so curve around that way and the curve around that way oh that went a bit wobbly and that's fine 
So there's my two leaves. So I'm just going to open those out. That could be a little bit more pointy. Open those out so they're like that. And these I'll sew through both leaves together and just one stitch straight through into the pumpkin. And that'll hold them in place. Okay, then finally I'll just knot off my thread here. Just make sure that my stalk is nice and secure. Knock the stitches out of the way. Snip off my thread, and there, my pumpkin's finished.